Hello everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit simple today. I'm um, just covering some basic attribute transfers and how you can use attributes to create deformations and also gross uh, through different uh, geometries. So today I've created this little kind of uh, gory effect. We do have some jittering in the face, but this because this was round one for me, we're actually gonna be fixing this in the tutorial, so don't worry about that. We're gonna show you how we can do randomized emissions, um, this kind of basic face melt as everything is going forward, and this kind of deformation of the face as something is kind of slowly deforming it into this kind of jagged mesh that we see. So let's get started and fix any mistakes that were made in phase one. So I'm gonna start out with a blank Houdini file and we're also going to just create a basic geometry node to kind of start building everything in. So I'm gonna call this head build. And inside here, we want to go inside and grab the test geometry. The te test geometry that we're going to be using today is actually the test. So template body is going to work well for us today. And, and then from here, I'm going to use a clip and I'm just going to isolate down the head. Now, if you want to do this on a full body, you absolutely can, but I'm just going to localize this experiment to the head today. So what we're going to do next is just cut off everything below the neck and transform this back down to world space like this. So we're gonna have something like that. And I'm just gonna uh, go down here and add another transform node because now I want to transform it up and make it a little bit more big. Okay, so now we're gonna make this around three times the size and I'm just gonna lift this into the air like that. And the reason I'm just making it a little bit bigger is because as you can see the default head is like less than a meter big. So making it bigger is going to help us in general with the simulation. So now we have to do something where we have to fill the inside of the head. And we have to fill this because um, we need our geometry to be full um, or like not have any holes in it. So we're going to polyfill. And there we go. We've now capped our head. And I'm going to put down a quad remesh. So the quad remesh here is just going to remesh our head and as you can see we're losing some detail so we're gonna have to add some more quads until we get something that's reasonable looking like this. So now from here what I want to do is I'm just gonna add a little null just to signify this is like a uh, head remesh. You have that. Now before we go any further, because you know Houdini is Houdini, we want to turn on autosave. So if you navigate, navigate over to edit and autosave, this should definitely help your progress in the software. Now this is where the fun part begins. What we're going to be doing here is actually using something uh, called the Pyrosource Spread Tools. And they are one of my favorite tools in Houdini. By default, I just kind of click down the spreading fire tool, and then I delete everything that I don't need. So I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. And I definitely don't need this or the rasterizer. The most I need is just these little guys over here that I'm going to connect like that. Now what's going to happen next is because we do have static geometry, that's great so far, but here's the problem. When you go and you use this tool or any really pyro tool, it converts everything to points. So you, even though you have this spreading attributes over points, we still want to be working with the geometry of the head and putting these attributes back on to the geometry itself. So we're going to have to use something called a point deform or an attribute transfer to get that process started. Um, so I'm going to just skim through my timeline here so you can see that, you know, our model is not animated and I'm just going to lower my timeline to 123. Now the fun part begins. I need more resolution in these points. So I'm going to lower my point, uh, my particle separation to something super small. Um, if you do this too low, it will crash Houdini. So you just need to find a good middle ground, one that's not too heavy and then one that's not too light. Uh, <laughs> sometimes things will go wrong and when they do go wrong things get interesting so i think that's good for now now we want to create a hot group so what we're going to do now is i'm going to turn off bounding regions enable my base group and then select an area at the really where i want my growth to kind of start or where i want the skin to start melting which is probably near the neck so we have something like that now we have this tool which makes everything hot 
and then we go to simulate spread. And this is kind of where the magic happens. It spreads attributes such as total burn, burn, temperature, um, diffusion over the object. So we can kind of real visualize this and play back the timeline and kind of see these things take part. So let's just wait a couple seconds. And we're gonna try and create an interesting pattern that we can manipulate later on to kind of use in our skin deformation. So as you can see here, we've got some like growth starting with the total burn. It's really kind of overall spreading. That's really nice. Um, I think I might want to add a smaller element scale um, in this. And then I might also want to turn off animated here. And we'll just kind of go through the settings and try to create a cool pattern that we can kind of devolve the skin through. So I'm going to go all the way to frame uh, 120 frames. So I'm going to give this a few seconds just to cook out. All right. So look at that. That's a beaut. Look at that. So I like this a lot. And let's kind of visualize the other attributes as well. So temperature, we got something like that. We got total burn. This is looking pretty promising. I like this. So the next part about this is transfer these attributes back on to our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down here, attribute transfer this back, and you can see that we've got some chonky looking stuff. So I'm going to keep total burn, I'm gonna keep fuel maybe, temperature, and burn. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower my distance threshold because you can see that's controlling the overall transfer process. And I'm going to use something called attribute blur just to blur some attributes on my object. So the attributes I want to blur are basically burn, fuel, temperature, total burn. I want to make sure I don't have, I want to have something that's still growth like, but you know, maintains or retains like we don't want some chonky looking edges. What I'm going to do is play with my distance thresholds. And also, I might have to go back up here to my quad remesh and just add more polygons. Sometimes that helps a lot. But as you can see, when you do that, you're going to have to restart your simulation and create a new hot group because that will absolutely change the positioning of the hot group. Alrighty, so this is what we've got so far. I'm going to lower my step scale to even something smaller. Um, so I don't, I think that's good for now. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to set up my group. So there's three different groups I'm going to kind of set up. And these groups are important later on because they're going to help us deform all of our different objects. So I'm just going to put down three different groups. And for all of them, I'm just going to select them all. <laughs> uh, not let Houdini cook, but I'm going to select all of them, go to group name, just put in dollar $OS, and that should be for all of them, so now we can just name the node. And I also want to turn all of these into point groups as well, because we're going to be grabbing attributes. This one's going to be called skin boils. This one's going to be called skin boil small. And this one's going to be called growth. And now I'm going to start setting up the attributes that they're going to grab. For, for this one, I'm going to use something called at fuel is less or greater than zero. And you can see now that's grabbing the fuel like this. Now I may want to change that a little bit because I think my radius is a little bit big. But as you can see, like, it might be best to just keep it at zero. Now for the skin boils, what we're going to use is another attribute. We're going to use something called total burn. So total burn is going to grab everything. It's kind of almost the same as fuel. Actually, fuel's got some interesting buddies up there. Um, so you might want to go up here to our simulate spread and figure out what why fuel is looking like that. So we want to only grab this area. And unfortunately, it's not doing that for us. So what I'm going to do is just change stuff like this and just overall try and get some you know blotchy stuff removed from the upper part of this head cool so we'll just wait a couple seconds see if that changes anything in our selection process okay that looks a lot better 
now I'm just gonna double check and take a look at my burn temperatures. Okay, that looks like that now. That looks like that. So we might wanna go over here to skin boils, where it says total burn. And we want to also visualize the total burn right now, which looks like this, which is cool and all, but I think the next one should be more effective on, or kind of more controlling on the burn layer, because I think we're gonna get some really nice patterns in there. So let's go to growth and let's put this in as burn. Like that. And I'm just going to increase this number until I get a good selection range that's gonna create some good deformations for me. So now I'm also going to put down a little null and I'm just gonna call out set groups. And this is also the point where I delete any attributes that I don't need, which is most of them. So I attribute delete this, just put in all of them here. So now everything should look like that. It's gonna keep the groups, but just get rid of the color. And we are gonna put down a file cache and we're just gonna call this base mesh set. And I'm gonna save that out. So while that's cooking out, now the fun part happens. We have to set up another group. And this group is going to be called, well, it's gonna create some circle-like indents on the face. So we're gonna use a blast go through here and go grab the skin boils group or no we want the small I think let's go with growth so growth is giving us this cool 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 so now we're going to basically add remove unused points delete non-selected so we're going to have something that looks like this and then we're gonna use something called divide. And divide is basically gonna create these really cool, almost scale-like things on our mesh like this, which is great. So we're gonna put that to the side a little bit. And now we have to do our this first half of our deformation of the face. So now what we're going to do is put them down two peak nodes. And the peak nodes are gonna be like this. So the first one is gonna get that. Now you can see the extrusion that is starting to happen on the face where we have our growth happening. Now this is a little bit too big, so we want it to be just subtle enough. You can kind of see some changes. And as you go along, you might go, oh, well, I really don't like how that's growing on the face. I really don't like how that's deforming on the face. It looks a little bit too, like, you know, flat or uniform. So you might want to go back and um, up here, just go back to your simulate spread and change it. So we'll do that right after we set up both of these mm -hmm. peaks. So. Here we have skin boils, and then we have skin boils small, which I'll do next is just like this, and slowly see it getting bigger. And yeah, we, let's revisit our simulate spread, because I think we don't have a, a lot of great patterns on the total burn. So let's go to temperature change over here, um, change some axes, you know, have some fun here. And... Let's play this back. Okay, so that's looking better. Let's add some roughness into this, see what happens. So if you're wondering what the noise does, it creates uh, basically, as you can see, holes in the overall kind of uniformity of that attribute. So we can, we can actually just play with a bunch of different things like this. They kind of create a really kind of good, great growth across the character. We might have to lower our element size. So we're still getting this growth pattern, but I wanna check on temperature, burn. Let's go back to our group. So we have burn, total burn. I'm gonna go like this. Kind of refine that a little bit more. And I'll just turn off my file cache right now while I kind of preview this growth. So now that is looking way better. And we got some cool 
new formations happening. You might notice like there's some jagged edges. So what you can do to fix that is just use a simple attribute blur on the default settings like this. And you can notice it smooths everything out pretty damn well. So we'll recache everything out again and we'll go here. Now the next thing we want to do is introduce our new deformations into the skin. So the one way we have to do that is we have to make sure everything we just blast and created is gonna match the new def deformation. So we have to have, this is the collision primitives, and this in the second first input there, and then minimum distance. And then that should make sure this follows the other growth pattern. Now, the other, now how do we get these little scales or create indents in the face? Well, we have to extrude them. So I'll show you how to do that. So I have had to jump over, uh, had to experiment for a bit and jump forward a few seconds. So what I did here is I dropped down something called measure and Houdini measure is like a, for beginners, it can be a complex and overwhelming tool, but basically it measures things. So you can grab that attribute and you can use it later. So what this is doing right now is just measuring everything for me. So it's measuring the area of each little individual thingy here. Now, how I've kind of started to group this and say, okay, well, there's a small group, there's a bigger group. So as you can see, the bigger kind of scales are grouped in the big group and the small scales are grouped in the small group. What I'm doing here um, for b the bigger group is just uh, by saying at group small is not equal to one and then that's just grouping all of them together. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the blast node here and just blast away all the smaller groups. Then I'm going to resample this so they're spheres like this. And then I'm going to extrude them like this. So now we got some kind of pock marks that are going to appear on the face. The next thing we are going to do is we want to add another group. So what this is going to do, come up here, our attribute blur, we plug that in, come down here, and we go points dollar s I call this circles and then we'll go bound by bounding regions bounding objects and now we have our pock marks this is pretty cool so now what we can do now is go to the peak node once again and create deformations in the face so now we have circles you can see that now I can indent the face wherever I choose so uh, this might be a little bit too heavy. Might need bigger indents. But that's how you would start to create this kind of pocked mark effect. So as this grows, um, we're gonna have like these wonderful indents. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm actually just gonna turn off this attribute blur here because I think layering them might be a little bit too much. And I'm just gonna put it down here instead. I'm just gonna play with my step size and I'm gonna try and as go as I go through like just fix everything to kind of get a more disgusting skin pattern so as I play this back I should see something cool start to happen where my face starts to get really bubbly and really deformy so again you're just gonna have to play with it and find a texture that looks disgusting enough for you to put on the skin of your character. Now the fun part about this is that we're gonna cache this out again, cause now we're at a part where we can just say, okay, well, we got the bumps done. And I'm gonna just say, save. And put a little null back down here to signify that we've gotten groups done. 